Okay, now we will see uh, one receipt setup, that is the mandatory setup, we will not see all the setups. Uh, then we will see uh, the transaction parts, we will we'll enter one invoice and one receipt after this. So we have the receipt setup, that is the receipt class, receipt method and remittance bank account. So basically receipt classes and receipt method is uh, what is the method of payment, how the customer is paying you, whether they are paying by internet banking, net banking uh, or they are doing a wire transfer, they are paying a check, they are paying cash, manual payment, what, how, which method they are paying you. So for that you need to define this receipt method. So all these three setups, receipt class, receipt method and remittance bank account is in the same page, single page and basically uh, remittance bank account is the bank account to which customer is making the transfer, to which account the customer is paying the money, to which account they are remitting the money. So I'll just quickly open this setup once. So all the receipt setups We will open it. Okay, it's here. Define customer payments and receipt class and receipt methods. So this is the last setup that we'll be seeing. Let me just search for any setup and open it. So again, this is your receipt class on the top. You give the name whether it is manual or automatic, if you are creating the receipts also automatically or importing the receipts using logbox processing. Uh, logbox processing is something basically that is used for creating your receipts automatically. So if you want to create the receipts automatically then you create a manual or imported source rather, not a manual one, but if you are entering it manually then you create a manual source and then you give the receipt method, whether it is check or wire transfer, internet banking or something. And then again in the bottom you attach a remittance bank account. So you enter the receipt class, receipt method and the remittance bank account in the same page. You select your business unit for each business unit. You need to configure this remittance bank account and you give the bank information and stuff and you give the accounting codes here basically. So this is your accounting for your receipts part. The accounting that we discussed so far using uh, auto accounting in the transaction types and stuff, that was for your transactions, for your invoices. So this is for your receipts part. So unapplied receipts, unidentified, on account receipts. Un, uh, so I'll explain quickly what is the meaning of all this. So basically unapplied means the receipt which is not applied to any transaction. Unidentified means a receipt you have entered in the system but you don't know what is the customer name. And on account means you basically do not apply it to a particular invoice but you apply to on account of the customers to maintain the customer balance. Maybe customer is not paying the money per invoice basis. Let's say he pays the money on lump sum basis every month. So you will apply the invoice on the on account basis and stuff. And then unearned discounts and earned discounts. This is coming from your receivables activity. As I told this thing is mandatory earned and unearned discounts that you need to define. So this is the one mandatory setup that you need to define for your receipts part. Now what I will do is I will go to the transactions part. And we'll see some of the transactions. I've given screenshots here, which you can go through later on. So how you will go navigate is click on receivables. We have three sections, billing, account receivables and revenue. And billing part basically is for your transactions. Account receivables is for receipts. So in billing part, we have all our transactions. On the top section, we have all business unit. 
So we have all business units and then this is the business unit that is for which we have access to and you can either select all business units or you can select the specific business unit. Now I'm not going to the setup how to attach the business unit to a user because we have already seen it in payables and similar way you do it in receivables as well. You go to the business unit page and per user per role basis you attach the business unit. So roles we have already discussed what are roles for receivables, the standard roles or the seeded roles. That is how you attach the uh, business unit to a user. Now in this particular dashboard, these transactions would be available if any incomplete transaction is there that is not completed, anything which is there for approval and anything, all these import exceptions, all these things if, if it is there, all those transactions would be appearing here. Right now I don't have any transactions here, all this is zero. But for entering the transactions, again I need to go to the tasks and I have to enter or create a transaction. Let's create a transaction quickly. Now all the setups that you had created, all those will be appearing here. Like you select the business unit, transaction class is invoice, debit memo or credit memo. And then this is my business unit. This is my transaction source. So whatever transaction source you have set up, let's say A to F manual source we had opened and seen. So you select the source. Transaction type automatically populates once you select the source, if you have selected that uh, that it should get automatically defaulted down. We have already seen these setups. Select the customer name now. So I'm just selecting the customer name here. So this is my customer. This is my transaction type and transaction source. And then I'll say description, some item, computer or something, whatever item it will be, unit of measurement, quantity, let's say 100, price is again 120 or something. And then this transaction you have entered, you can enter multiple lines here and stuff all that. You want to enter the freight information, all those information you can enter. You can click on show more. So you can see bill to information, ship to information here on the bottom and stuff. You can go to the payments tab. So you can see what payment is there, what is the payment term, what is the due date that system has picked up and stuff. You can change it if you want to, whether you want to exempt from late charges and stuff. Remit to address where exactly the money will be remitted. So now. Okay, I'll not enter this field. This is a star mark field which has to be mandatorily entered. Let us complete this transaction and review it. It should throw an error that you did not enter a remit to address field. So the default remit to address was not populated. Now what I can do is I can just save this transaction and close it. So this is a mandatory, we cannot just cancel this or just leave it without entering it. Now this transaction is still in incomplete mode. You have to complete this transaction. Like in AP, we have to validate the transaction. You have to validate the invoice. Similar way in AR, we have to complete the transaction. So all the incomplete transactions can be seen in the dashboards. So complete and review. So completed transaction, you cannot change any information. If you have completed the transaction, you cannot change any information. You have to incomplete it again and then you have to make the changes. So you can see incomplete transactions, you can make the changes, but once the transaction has been completed, you cannot change it. Again, second thing, if you have like created a transaction and just saved it without completing it even once, you can delete those transactions. So you can see this delete option you can delete those transactions. But once you have completed it, you cannot delete the completed transactions and stuff. So all these things you can do with the transaction. Now I just save this transaction. Can you see one incomplete transaction is coming? Why? Because I incompleted it again. So this is the one that I created. 
so this is the transaction that is coming this is still not in uh, complete mode you cannot create uh, receipts again this particular invoice because this is not completed so I have to complete this transaction you can say view image if you want to see what image or what PDF system has generated for the invoice you can do any customizations in this format if you want to if you want to change the customers logo and stuff all those things can be done it takes a while for this to come so you can you see this infusion here so this is your remit to address that you selected so your address comes on the top and your logo you can basically change the logo this is the invoice number bill to ship to information all the lines amount if you have any taxes all those will be printed sent payment to this particular address the remit to address that you selected and all the stuff now we will uh, go and enter one receipt for this transaction so that happens in your account receivables dashboard so this is the place where you can enter the receipt so you can see it receipt batches lockbox exceptions any unapplied receipts unapplied credits if you have created credit memos and you haven't applied to invoices and stuff you can see unapplied receipts uh, you have created the receipt but you haven't applied to any invoices so you can apply it so I'll say create receipt select the receipt method so this is the receipt method that we had seen why only one receipt method is created coming here because only for one receipt method we have attached this disbursement bank account and then disbursement bank account level we have to select the business unit so only one setup we have done one receipt method we have done for this business unit that's why only one is coming receipt number is just your kind of EFT number or check number or something so you can enter just a number here entered amount the receipt amount any amount you want to enter and then you have to in the bottom you select the customer name then after selecting this either you can just save and submit and create another or if you want to apply this automatically to an invoice so you can apply it automatically or you can manually apply it let's say manually apply it and now this received I will add open receivables open receivables is your invoices so I want to apply it to the invoice so let's just search for that invoice for which we need to apply it I'll just select the customer name and we we'll search all the open invoices for this customer so we have these two open invoices for this customer 2001 2002 let's just select one you can apply half amount to first one half amount to second one that also can be done just add this click on done So you can see this is the amount applied and this is the balance that is due. So you can just change the amount. Let's say out of 1000 you want to apply only 500. So the receipt amount you created for 1000 but you want to apply 500 only to this particular invoice. So you can see you can see the history here if you have means applied and you have changed it and stuff like that. So all the history can be seen here all the activities can be seen here if you have like probably created a refund and stuff all those activities can be seen here and then just save this simple as that you want to reverse this transaction and you want to post this to the ledger create accounting for this all those things you can do here save and close so like this you will create the invoice and you will create the receipt and apply the receipt to the invoices.